Tensions have heightened significantly following Iran's test launch of a long-range ballistic missile from a warship, marking the first instance of such a launch. These missiles, as per our research, are typically associated with nations possessing nuclear capabilities. The unexpected missile launch caught American forces in the Mediterranean off guard and has raised speculation about Iran potentially possessing a secret nuclear warhead. While this claim is currently unverified and in its early stages, if proven true, it would significantly impact the geopolitical landscape in the region. It's worth recalling that Iran's former head of the Atomic Energy Organization, Ali Akbar Salehi, hinted at Iran being closer than ever to acquiring a nuclear weapon. This announcement wasn't entirely surprising, given the ongoing concerns raised by the UN nuclear watchdog regarding Iran's pursuit of 90% uranium enrichment purity, which is indicative of potential nuclear warhead development. Some even speculate that Iran may already possess such weapons a claim that, if confirmed, would fundamentally shift perceptions of the Middle East. On February 13th, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, conducted a military exercise simulating an attack on a mock-up of an Israeli airbase, reportedly housing F-35 fighter jets using Emad and Kader missiles. The upgraded Emad missile, utilizing liquid fuel and enhanced warheads, successfully hit the target from a distance of 1,700 kilometers with remarkable accuracy. Additionally, the Iranian Army Ground Forces Airborne Force introduced an enhanced version of the Shafak Heliborn anti-armor missile and the Yousef aerial camera. Developed by experts within the force and Iranian knowledge-based companies, the upgraded missile boasts an increased range of 20 kilometers, while the new Yousef camera operates effectively in all weather conditions, day and night. Iran's missile program demonstrates its determination to push boundaries despite facing sanctions. Despite challenges posed by occupying forces in Palestine and their allies, Iran appears committed to its pursuit of regional influence. The display of various missiles in Tehran serves as a reminder to America and its allies of Iran's capabilities, prompting them to seek a deeper understanding of how Iran achieves such feats despite unprecedented sanctions. Since the Iranian revolution, the country has made significant strides in technological advancement, often blending imported technology with local innovations. This approach has contributed to Iran's development of a highly competitive drone arsenal, which is now recognized as one of the most advanced globally. Countries like Russia and certain allies in the Middle East rely on Iran's expertise and hardware to compensate for deficiencies in their own drone industries. Despite facing pressure from Western nations and occupation authorities, Iran has managed to excel in nuclear technology. Despite the targeting of many top scientists, Iran has persevered and made significant progress in this field. In the medical sphere, Iran has achieved a level of self-sufficiency by domestically producing a vast majority of its essential medical and health equipment despite trade restrictions. Iran is poised to become one of the world's largest exporters of medicines and surgical equipment, with 95% of its medical needs currently being met domestically. The country's health minister anticipates a substantial increase in medical tourism, with projections indicating medical exports reaching $37 billion by 2027. These accomplishments make Iran a formidable presence in the Middle East coupled with its pursuit of nuclear capabilities, particularly concerning amidst the occupation in Palestine, Iran's position becomes increasingly significant. The country boasts numerous research sites, two uranium mines, a research reactor, and uranium processing facilities, including three known uranium enrichment plants. Iran's nuclear infrastructure dates back to the 1950s, when the United States initially supported its nuclear endeavors through the Atoms for Peace program, aimed at promoting peaceful scientific exploration. However, following the 1979 Iranian Revolution, cooperation ceased, and Iran pursued its nuclear program covertly.
In 2002, the National Council of Resistance of Iran's revelations prompted an investigation by the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, into undisclosed Iranian nuclear activities. Iran's failure to comply with its non-proliferation treaty, NPT, obligations in 2006 led to demands from the United Nations Security Council for the suspension of its nuclear programs. While a 2007 United States National Intelligence Estimate, NIE, suggested Iran had halted an alleged active nuclear weapons program in 2003, subsequent reports from the IAEA indicated credible evidence of experiments aimed at developing a nuclear bomb, with possible ongoing research afterward. As of May 1, 2018, the IAEA reiterated its 2015 report, finding no credible evidence of nuclear weapons activity after 2009. The operational Boucher I reactor, operational since September 2011, marked Iran's entry into nuclear power with assistance from Russia. This milestone positioned Rosatom as a key player in the global nuclear power market. Iran's construction of the new 300 MW Darkovin nuclear power plant slated for completion by the end of 2012, further demonstrated its commitment to nuclear energy. Plans were also underway for additional medium-sized nuclear power plants and uranium mines in the future. Despite the 2015 Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, aimed at addressing Iran's nuclear concerns, the U.S. withdrawal in 2018 led to renewed sanctions, straining diplomatic relations. While the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, certified Iran's compliance until 2019, subsequent breaches strained the agreement. A 2020 IAEA report indicated Iran's violations of the JCPOA, drawing criticism from signatories. The lack of transparency surrounding Iran's nuclear program has led to speculation about its nuclear capabilities drawing parallels with nations like India, where secrecy facilitated the development of nuclear missiles, many in the Middle East and beyond believe that Iran may already possess nuclear weapons. While definitive conclusions cannot be drawn, analysis of enrichment data and assessments from the UN nuclear watchdog suggest that Iran has the capacity to produce at least 10 nuclear warheads. It is also important to consider the nuclear arsenal of the occupying force in Palestine. Amidst discussions about Iran's nuclear activities, it is easy to overlook the fact that the occupation is widely believed to possess nuclear weapons. Though the occupation has never officially acknowledged having such weapons, there have been indications suggesting their existence. The occupation's nuclear program dates back to the late 1950s and early 1960s with assistance from France. At one point, more than 2,500 French workers lived in Demona. It was all top secret. You couldn't even write back home. You had to write letters to a fake PO box in Latin America. But despite all of this, the Americans did find out. In 1960, they got photographic evidence. Israel was building a reactor in the Negev desert. So Eisenhower wanted answers. He was a US president. Ben Gurion said it was all peaceful. He also made a statement in the Israeli Knesset. Till date, it's the only mention of Dimona in Israel's parliament. And what did the prime minister say? Same thing he told the Americans. Dimona is meant for peaceful purposes. Israel needed electricity. Nuclear power was the only way. The Dimona nuclear reactor in the Negev desert, ostensibly constructed for peaceful purposes, has long been suspected of being involved in the production of fissile material for nuclear weapons. Despite the secrecy surrounding the occupation's nuclear capabilities, it is widely recognized as the only nuclear-armed state in the Middle East. Despite its policy of ambiguity, there have been numerous indications and revelations suggesting the existence of the occupation's nuclear arsenal. One notable instance is Mordecai Vanunu, a former technician at the Demona facility who disclosed details about the occupation's nuclear program to the British press in 1986. Vanunu provided photographs and descriptions of the facility's operations, shedding light on its activities. Additionally, 
declassified documents from the United States and other sources have further substantiated the occupation's nuclear capabilities. While estimates of the occupation's nuclear arsenal vary, it is widely believed to possess a significant number of warheads, ranging from several dozen to over a hundred. The ambiguity surrounding the occupation's nuclear program carries significant implications for regional security and stability in the Middle East. While the occupation maintains a policy of nuclear opacity, its possession of nuclear weapons has raised concerns among neighboring countries and the international community. The lack of transparency and accountability raises questions about the potential risks and challenges posed by nuclear proliferation in the region. Furthermore, the occupation's nuclear capabilities have influenced the security calculations of other countries in the Middle East, contributing to regional tensions and arms races. Efforts to promote transparency and disarmament in the region face obstacles due to the secrecy surrounding the occupation's nuclear program. Addressing these challenges requires concerted diplomatic efforts and a commitment to fostering trust and cooperation among all stakeholders involved. It's crucial to raise awareness and foster informed discussions on this issue. Please consider sharing this information and subscribing to stay updated on developments in Palestine. Until the next update, let's hope for peace and stability in the region.